Well, over the last few weeks, it has been really busy for our water tanker unit here at the Barbados Water Authority, responding to many customers in Christchurch. And of course, we're always in St. Lucie as well, making sure that they have a quality supply of water. Judah Brown is the coordinator with the water tanker unit. And speaking to us here on Water Wednesdays, he'll talk a bit about the logistics, how it works. So talk a bit about that. What do you do? And you've been so busy and, and thank you for your service. What do you do when you get a call from customers in some of the affected areas? So what we do, we, we do a recording of the customers and where they live. We try to get their phone numbers and also the location where they're at. So that information then we pass it on to the tanker driver. And it has been a number of customers uh, that experience in Christchurch must have been really hectic. What, what are some of the feedback that you have been getting from customers? It was really hectic in Christchurch for the Hampton Compass Station. Um, the issue up there was there was such a great demand for water. And as you know, we don't have enough tankers to supply that great demand for water. So we try to encourage the customers to be patient because the tanker drivers have to go from house to house delivering water. Yes. So that would take a little time before you could go on to the next customer. When our system was done, our first concern was the nursing homes, the schools, police stations. We try to use the bigger tankers to go to like the farms and the, the smaller tankers to go through the districts, which will make it easier and more maneuverable yeah. For, for those trucks to work. Some customers from time to time will request from us a schedule in terms of when the tanker will get into the area. Uh, this is very difficult for several reasons. For instance, a tanker gets into Kingsland. Um, the last outage we had with, with Hampton being out, we had three tankers in Kingsland. One of them was a mega tanker and Went into to Kingsland, we had so many customers coming out to all sorts of containers and we don't know what containers they have and some customers have tanks. So imagine giving a, a household, filling their tank and then people coming up with all sorts of buckets and everything and they have to fill the buckets multiple times because they have toilets to flush, etc. So it is very, very difficult for the water authority to come up with an actual schedule and timeline of when a tanker will go into an area. And, and, and in addition to that, they also have to leave the area and go and fill up and then come back to, to finish the area. And we always make sure that people get the adequate, adequate amount of water that they need for their household or business. I know some people see the water tanker past their home and wonder, why hasn't it stopped by me? What happens in a case like that? In a case like that, what happens is the truck is going to refill. When we go into a district or any area, first thing we do, we put on the jingle and we blow the horn, right? That's the indicator. That's the indicator. That's for the time. But at night, we also turn on the beacon so that customers will know that we are coming into the area. When we are leaving, we usually turn off that beacon so they know that we are not working at that period of time. We're going to refill and come back. Well, thank you, Coordinator Brown, for explaining to the public how the water tanker unit works. We know you have been busy. Again, a big thank you to you for delivering water to our customers, especially when they needed it most. And thank you for watching another edition of Water Wednesdays. To view this or our previous episode again, please visit our website, www.barbadiswaterauthority.com. You can go to our Facebook or Instagram for further content and updates and please type what Wednesdays in YouTube you can find us there